Hey everyone, welcome back for our exploration of the different procedures for administering medication. This lesson focuses on topical medications given to treat skin disorders, and we'll discuss the integumentary system, common skin disorders, and application techniques. In order to best understand the different administration techniques, first we need to identify the basic anatomy of the integumentary system. The integumentary system, comprising the skin and its associated structures, is the body's largest organ. The skin is comprised of three layers. Epidermis, the outermost layer, providing a waterproof barrier and creating our skin tone. Dermis, beneath the epidermis, containing tough connective tissue, hair follicles, and sweat glands. Hypodermis, the deep subcutaneous tissue made of fat and connective tissue. The skin plays a role in protection, regulation, and sensation. The skin acts as a barrier against pathogens and injuries, protecting the body from infection. It also regulates body temperature through sweat. Finally, the skin contains nerve endings that respond to pain, touch, and temperature. There are several skin disorders that may require treatment, including contact dermatitis, eczema, psoriasis, burns, pressure ulcers, skin infections, scabies, and pediculosis. Each of these skin disorders may require the use of different topical medications. Knowing the common disorders affecting the skin allows for early detection and effective treatment, reducing the risk of complications. Part of the effective treatment are 10 groups of medication used for these and other disorders. Keratolytics, remove dead skin cells, used in conditions like psoriasis and warts. Protectives, form a barrier on the skin, like zinc oxide and diaper rash creams. Astringents, cause skin cells to contract, used in toners to tighten pores. Antipyritics, relieve itching, such as calamine lotion, used for relief from chicken pox. Topical corticosteroids, reduce inflammation, used in conditions like eczema. Vasoconstrictor treatments, reduce swelling, often used in venous insufficiency. Antiseptics, prevent infection in cuts and abrasions. Topical anesthetics, numb the skin, like lidocaine in sunburn gels. Miticides, treat scabies and lice. Transdermal patches, allow medication to be absorbed directly through the skin into the bloodstream. Transdermal patches are covered in a separate lesson. Now let's look at the procedures for administering topical medications to the skin. We will discuss creams and lotions, liniments, which are liquids or lotions made with oil, and aerosol sprays. Regardless of the medication, its form, or its route for administration, you should always follow these basic protocols when preparing medications. Observe hand hygiene. Double check the patient information to make sure you are giving the medication to the correct patient and to be aware of potential allergies. Refer to the Medication Administration Record, or MAR, to see when the medication was last administered. Obtain the required medication in the correct dose and check the expiration date. And gather any equipment needed to administer the drug. First, we'll look at administering medicated creams, ointments, and lotions, like zinc oxide or neosporin. To administer these medications, ensure the patient is in a comfortable position. Identify and prepare the area for treatment. The skin where the cream or lotion will be applied should be clean and dry. Apply the cream or lotion gently with your gloved hand using just enough to cover the affected area with a thin film. For instance, with zinc oxide, begin with a pea-sized amount. Ointments are often applied with a wooden blade or cotton swab. Lotions are patted or dabbed onto the skin, and you should be sure to always shake lotions prior to administration, as lotion ingredients may separate. Avoid rubbing the medication vigorously, as this can irritate the skin. Instead, gently smooth it into the skin in the direction of hair growth. For certain conditions like eczema, you might be advised to apply the cream beyond the visibly affected area to cover skin that looks normal. Be careful to avoid getting the medication in the patient's eyes, mouth, or inside their nose unless directed otherwise. Also, be cautious around open wounds or sores unless the medication is meant for these areas. Once administered, monitor the area for any signs of adverse reactions, like increased redness, itching, or irritation, and report these to a healthcare provider. For liniments, again, ensure the patient is in a comfortable position. Explain the purpose of the treatment and any sensations they might feel, such as warming, cooling, or tingling. 
Pour a small amount of liniment into your gloved hand or on a cotton ball or pad. Gently apply it to the affected area with your gloved hand using a smooth, circular rubbing motion. The goal is to cover the area thoroughly without applying too much pressure. Ensure even distribution over the area, focusing on the spots where the patient reports the most discomfort. If appropriate and comfortable for the patient, you can lightly massage the area to help absorption and increase blood flow. However, this should be done gently to avoid any discomfort. Be cautious around eyes, mouth, nose, and other mucous membranes. Liniments should not be used on these areas. Observe the patient for any adverse reactions, such as skin irritation, redness, or an allergic response. Remove any excess liniment from the skin if necessary, especially if the patient has sensitive skin. Inform the patient about any sensations they might feel, like a cooling or warming effect, and advise them not to touch their eyes or face immediately after the application. Aerosol sprays are commonly used for conditions where minimal contact with the skin is preferred, such as painful skin disorders or hard-to-reach areas. Explain the procedure to the patient, including what the spray is for and what sensations, like cold or tingling, they might feel during application. Examine the area where the spray will be applied. Ensure it is clean and dry. Look for any cuts, wounds, or severe irritation. Avoid using the spray on broken or severely damaged skin unless specifically indicated. Shake the aerosol canister vigorously for about five seconds before use to ensure the medication is properly mixed. Hold the canister upright about three to six inches away from the skin. Distance may vary slightly depending on the product, so check the instructions. Press the nozzle to release the spray. Move the canister slightly as you spray to cover the affected area evenly. Apply a thin, even layer of medication. Depending on the order, you may have to spray a second and third time. However, avoid oversaturating the skin. Ensure the spray is directed away from the patient's face to avoid inhalation. Be cautious not to spray into the eyes, nose, mouth, or other mucous membranes. Some aerosols should not be sprayed in an enclosed area or where it is windy and it could be accidentally inhaled. Allow the medication to dry on the skin. This usually takes just a few minutes. Advise the patient not to touch or rub the treated area immediately after application. Monitor the patient for any immediate adverse reactions, such as increased irritation or an allergic response. If any excess medication is on the skin and not absorbed after a reasonable time, gently blot it off. After completing any medication administration, regardless of route, be sure to record it in the patient's medical record, including the time and any observations. You should observe the patient for any immediate adverse reactions or side effects and ensure that the medication is achieving its intended effect. In summary, there are several types of medications used in the treatment of skin disorders. Topical medications come in cream, lotion, liniment, and aerosol spray forms. It's crucial to avoid contact with the patient's eyes, nose, mouth, or other mucous membranes when administering these medications. Always check for specific instructions related to the medication or the patient's condition. Proper technique ensures the medication's efficacy and reduces the risk of side effects or injury.